Hello, I'm Katrina Walker. I am super excited to be part of E. Shank's Trends. I would like to introduce you to my new book, The Essential Serger Reference Tool. Savvy sewists know that sergers are great for making sewing fast, easy, and professional looking. But there are lots of choices. How do you know which serger is right for you? My goal is to make using sergers fun and easy for everyone. I've designed the Essential Serger Reference Tool to help you to understand how sergers work and to be able to create with confidence using any brand or model of serger. It is full of illustrations and photos to help you see exactly what you need to know for using your serger. But buying a serger, that can be very confusing, so let's learn about the different types of sergers, both overlockers and cover stitch sergers, and discuss the differences between them. Are you confused about the difference between a cover lock serger and a cover stitch machine? No worries, I'll cover that also. We'll also discuss the pros and cons between traditional and air threading sergers. Okay, I have in front of me three different sergers, also called overlock machines. In the simplest terms, there are two main types of serger, four thread capable sergers or overlock machines, and five thread capable sergers or cover lock machines. Yes, there are cover lock style sergers out there that can use more than five threads. Those additional threads are used to create special decorative stitches, but I'm gonna stick with four and five threads as my two categories to avoid confusion. Now the most basic type of serger is the four thread, which can create stitches using four, three, or two threads to create a variety of overlocked seams and hems. So these simple sergers use up to two needles and two loopers to create stitches using various combinations of needles and loopers depending on what stitch you're creating. I say basic, but in reality you can create almost 20 different stitches with a four thread serger. Now a five thread capable serger is sometimes called a cover lock machine because it's able to create both overlock and cover stitches. It can do everything that a four thread capable serger can do but it has a third looper, a chain stitch looper, that also allows it to create chain stitches, safety stitches, and cover stitches. A cover lock machine also has three different needle positions that allow it to stitch with up to three needles for getting that beautiful cover stitch effect. Now here's where it can get confusing. There is another type of machine called a cover stitch machine. Now a cover stitch machine has only one looper, a chain stitch looper, and up to three needle positions. I do not have a cover stitch machine here. These are all either overlock or cover lock machines. The important thing to understand is that cover stitch machines can only create cover stitching or chain stitching. They cannot create an overlock stitch. I've had students sign up for serger classes and become very upset when they found out that they did not actually own a serger. So please understand that important difference. So, how do you know which serger is right for you? The question is, how do you plan to use your serger? If you're going to use your serger for basic seam finishing, construction, rolled hems, then you might be perfectly happy with a basic four thread serger. If you plan to create a lot of clothing that's heavy duty, you may want to be able to create a safety stitch, and that's what's made by a five thread cover lock machine. The five thread cover lock machine also create that double or triple stitch hem you see on a lot of ready to wear clothing. So if those are things that are important to you, you may want to invest in a five thread cover lock machine. Now, some sewists use a third option. Instead of buying a five thread cover lock machine that will do everything, they'll use a four thread serger for seaming and invest in a cover stitch machine just to use for hemming. Now, as a sewing professional, I actually have multiple sergers, so I kind of do a hybrid of that where I will have a cover lock machine set up to do my cover stitching, and I'll use my four thread for regular serging. And then I might have, since I have two of them, I might have this five thread cover lock machine set up for a safety stitch. So there's various ways to use it, but obviously most sewists do not have this many sergers. All right, so, but you can, there's more than one way to, to get what the features you want, just depending on your setup and of course your budget. Once you've decided which type of serger you want to buy, 
you have a couple of other choices to make. You need to decide if you want to thread the serger manually or using air threading. And you also need to decide, do you want to set tensions manually or automatically using a computerized interface? Most serger brands now offer sergers with air threading. So air threading means that instead of threading the looper pass by hand, you instead insert the thread into a special port and the serger blows the thread through the threading path, which is super fast and easy. And many sewists find threading a serger to be really intimidating. So air threading is a great way to work around that. And these air threaders are definitely more expensive, but if it's a difference between using it and not using it, then maybe it's worth the difference. All right. Now threading a serger manually is not difficult, but it does take attention to detail. And you need to check your manual to make sure that you are threading your machine in the correct order. When a stitch serger is not stitching correctly, it's usually because it was not threaded in the correct order. Now air threading sergers are not fussy about this, they, but manual threaded sergers are. So this is also something to consider, but most sewists can learn to thread a serger very easily and correctly with just a little bit of practice. Well, regardless of how a serger is threaded, it also has to have different tensions set for needles and loopers depending on which stitch you want to create. This can be done by either moving the dials or levers by hand or using a computerized touch screen to set your tensions automatically. Now, either method is very easy to use. If you're setting the tensions manually, you just need to look them up in the setting for each stitch in your serger manual. Now, for a computerized serger, you select the stitch on the screen and the serger automatically changes the tensions. Older sergers may simply display the settings on the screen, but computerized sergers will often let you save any customized settings in memory, whereas if you do that manually, of course, you'll need to write it down. So, Again, uh, a lot of it is down to expense. Manual threading sergers and manual tension servers are usually less expensive. So you have to take that into consideration. But luckily we do have choices for all different combinations of this. So for example, in, in these three sergers, I have a computerized manual threading. <laughs> so it's got computerized tension but manual threading serger. I have an air threading manual tension serger, and then I have an all automated computerized and air threading. So choose whatever combination works best for your budget and your sewing needs. All right. Now, of course, there's other serger features that are useful to know about when you're buying a serger, such as differential feet or cutting blade adjustments, specialty feet, and, and more. And you can learn more about those features and how they work by consulting the Essential Serger Reference Tool. So thank you for watching. I'm Katrina Walker. I am the author of the Essential Serger Reference Tool, and I'm wishing you happy serging.